Hello, Michael here again with another How Do I Render. This week we're going to be having a look at uh, how to render a hot air balloon as requested by Enrico Pinaccio uh, on YouTube. So basically there's a couple of things that we're going to be covering here. Uh, we're going to be looking at the translucency of the balloon itself, uh, placements of lights within the balloon so it can transmit light through the surface, and just some overall environment lighting ideas uh, just to get the scene set up looking nice. So as you can see I've got a balloon set up here already. It's, uh, oh, it's not the best model if you look on that side so we're going to use the good looking side. Uh, I've got some non-manifolds happening and I just don't have time to fix them right now so we're just going to charge on ahead. Um, you can see I've already applied some colour to the basket and the ropes just so you are aware of that. Um, so let's get started by selecting our balloon and applying a uh, pixel surface shader to it. So uh, just looking at the attribute header editor here on the right, um, we are going to pick a color using the diffuse uh, channel first. So I'm going to keep the gain at one for diffuse and we're going to change the color to, well I've already picked out a couple of colors, um, I've been using this crimson color which I think looks good. Um, and the roughness can stay at zero for now. And um, while we're, before we get right into that, let's just drop in a light that's going to simulate the um, flame that, that you'd use to make an, a hot air balloon rise into the air. So we can do that by uh, going over to the shelf and right clicking and then clicking Pixar Sphere Light and you'll get one of these bad boys. So this light is obviously a little bit too big so let's size it down and then move it up to roughly sort of here, maybe a little bit higher. Um, I'm, I've never actually been in a hot air balloon, so I don't exactly know what the anatomy of them is, but I think that sort of looks about right as to where, I don't know, the light would be from the um, flame itself. Uh, and the flame color, let's make it quite orange, um, so, so the area around it, it looks like it's being illuminated by a fairly close flame light source. Um, if the areas were a little bit further away from the light source itself, I'd probably make it a bit more red, but I think orange will look good. Um, and let's make this intensity say 25 for now um, and let's do a quick render and see what it looks like uh, all right it looks like absolutely nothing because we need some more lights uh, obviously so let's just jump back into our scene here and stop that IPR um, so let's get uh, an environment light in actually no let's not use an environment light let's use a environment daylight uh, because this is going to be a fairly realistic it's not that realistic but it's fairly realistic sort of same so uh, using the Pixar daylight which you can just get to by clicking the right clicking the Sun button and then going down to Pixar environment daylight um, if you've got it selected uh, we're going to set the sky tint to uh, blue funnily enough it would be a fairly light blue uh, with uh, medium saturation and the Sun tint let's make it um, sort of a peach color, which is my favorite sun color um, and the intensity can be one for now and now let's do an IPR and see what it looks like uh, and also one other thing that you'll need to do is turn the visibility on on your Pixar environment daylight otherwise you won't be able to see it so let's run that IPR Alright, so we've got this happening um, which isn't very realistic at all um, so our our hot air balloon, which from specific angles does not look very good, um, is obviously too dark. Um, it's because our light source is not great enough. Um, and also, uh, what I'm going to do is a quick way to adjust this horizon line is just to grab the uh, environment light and just shift it down. And it'll just take a bit of finessing. And I just want to catch a little bit of that lighter horizon so we get a bit of that haze. Yeah, so now, now that looks good, you can see that we've got the haze coming across the sort of middle-ish of the, of the shot. Um, and um, yeah, and we've got our, our balloon floating there in the air. Now obviously, right now it does not look very good, so let's work on that a little bit. I think the first thing we need to do is if we just jump back into our scene, uh, let's increase the intensity of this to... I think it needs to be quite high from memory. All right, so now it's starting to look like something because you can see it's illuminating the basket underneath. Um, and let's, while we're at it, let's just quickly go in the viewport to bookmarks. 
uh, edit bookmarks and create a new book bookmark because I quite like this angle. Now our uh, shader is not transmitting uh, any light through it at the moment because it's just a straight diffuse. So if we select our balloon and then we go to the Pixar surface shader under the attribute editor, we can go to the diffuse lobe and go under the advanced lobe and select double sided, which will mean that both sides of all the polygons will be shaded, um, which will allow us to transmit uh, some light throw. So let's transmit 0.2 through for now, which is pretty low value. And let's keep that transmit color where it is and just do an IPA to see what's happening. All right, so you can see already that some light's being transmitted through. Um, the balloon's a little bit jacked up, like I said, with the topology not being quite correct, but um, it's working for now. But um, you'll notice that our balloon is much too diffused because um, it's just got diffused on it. So let's uh, grab our face color on the primary, spe uh, primary specular lobe and um, let's use our crimson color as a starting point and then let's back off the saturation and increase the value and then let's just increase that edge color just slightly as well now it's uh, not nearly rough enough so let's make it a bit more rough because it's a sort of tarpaulin-y type plasticky surface um, like I said, do not know the anatomy of a hot air balloon. All right, so that's starting to get a little bit closer to um, what we want it to look like, but uh, the surface still doesn't look quite right. It looks a little bit too sort of hard, uh, but we want it to be transmitting a little bit more light than that. So let's go back to our um, uh, back to our Pixar surface shader, um, and let's change the transmit color to be the same color as our specular color. So if you compare the two, you can see that this color down here where the light is, has changed quite a bit. Which is good. It's starting to make it look more like plastic. Um, so we can still adjust a couple more things. Uh, I think the roughness can be increased a little bit to something like that. That looks pretty good. Um, but also a good way to simulate this plastic is to um, give it a clear coat layer. So if we just got into our clear coat lobe and just put in a touch of that. So yeah, as you can see with the clear coat, it's created a sheen on top of our surface, um, but it's too, um, too clean. So we want to make it a little bit rougher um, just so it sort of is picking up a bit of that sunlight and horizon. Actually, let's increase that quite a lot. Let's increase it to 0.5. Yeah, it's a bit better. So we still got that plasticky look happening now, um, but we're still getting that light transmitted through. Um, and with our primary specular, actually, let's not use our um, our transmit color. Um, let's use our crimson color, and that will make the overall color of the uh, of the hot air balloon appear to be more of its natural red color. And then now we could maybe tr increase our transmit gain somewhat, say maybe 0.3. Yeah, so now it's fairly translucent. So uh, not bad, uh, let's just jump back into our shot. So uh, why don't we add in another light, uh, just a uh, Pixar disc light. And let's help push the shot a little bit more so we really see the silhouette of all the um, sort of like the ribbed parts of this balloon. All right, let's increase that to 25. Let's go back to a bookmark. All right, so you can already see that, that adding that extra light in, if you compare the two, has just punched up that silhouette a little bit more. It's created a little bit more contrast between the value of the hot air balloon itself and the background, because um, they were both in sort of the medium dark range. And what you could also do is add in an extra light just for a little bit of more, bit more sky reflection. So just a blue light above it. So I'll quickly do that now. All right, so with a little fiddling, um, I've got the light basically where I want it to be, creating the effect of um, just sort of uh, a little bit of a variation in the edge. So some sort of lost edges where the, where the color of the, uh, of, of the balloon becomes similar to the color of the side, uh, sky, and then our darker side as well as contrasting our lighter side. So that's pretty much what I wanted to do. And I'll just quickly show you what it looks like in the scene. So I've just created a, a fairly large so, uh, light and um, it's just got an intensity of seven and it's got that sky sort of color. Um, so I'll render this up now um, to 
say like 128 samples and we'll look at it as a final all right so that is our final render um once again i my apologies for the topology of this balloon it is not very good at all um had i the time i would have fixed those um those errors there in the topology but um, for the sake of this tutorial, it will have to do, unfortunately. Uh, but hopefully that, that's helped you um, get an idea of how you might go about setting up a balloon tech, uh, material in RenderMan. Um, there's a, probably a couple of ways you could go about this as well. Um, this is just the way that sort of came to me off the when I was looking at some reference images. Uh, but I'm sure you could mix and match uh, just using specularity and not necessarily using a clear code. Uh, I just found this way to be the most straightforward. So if you did like it, let me know um, in the comments. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Um, and if you did like it, you could also click that like button, which will help other people find it. Um, and also, if you have enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more, make sure you're, you're subscribed because at the moment I'm doing two tutorials a week. So um, yeah, they're covering things like RenderMan and ZBrush and Maya and uh, 3D Code and all sorts of CG software. So if that's what you're into, make sure you're subscribed. Otherwise, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.